welcome to my first Solana Metaplex improvement proposal. It is late. I want to be quiet, but I do want to get this out there because J Prince himself asked me about it because I, I mentioned this idea on Twitter and I want to explain it properly. So we are talking about NFTs, specifically the Metaplex token metadata standard. And really what we're talking about is finding all the NFTs of one collection, because that is still an ongoing issue with Solana NFTs. On Ethereum, it's super easy because they're all in the contract, but there every NFT collection is their own contract. So that's not ideal for composability. And I kind of like it how Solana does it, but at the same time, it could be improved. See, wait, it is possible to find all NFTs that belong to a given collection by making a get program accounts call. Now, that is just, I don't want to say stupid, but inefficient. It's inefficient. Why? Solana is really good at giving an address, finding what's there. That's what Solana is good at. Getting all program accounts and querying for some, you know, wait, let's say we have an NFT. Let's take this for example. Let's say we have an NFT and we want to search for all of them in the collection. The way we do this is we take the creator address and we query all accounts from the metadata program, all of them, and search if the first creator is this address. That's literally what we need to do to find out what NFTs belong to that collection, which, I mean, the idea of that alone is inefficient. You need to go through all NFTs in existence and check them if they belong to the collection. That, you know, that's not ideal, right? But that's where we are. And get program accounts is not going to make it. It's just not going to make it because it's so inefficient. Uh, support for that stopped already right so what can we do instead we can save all token addresses somewhere on chain that will work the new standard now has a collection token it's literally that it's just a public key of an spl mint and an nft can belong to such a collection Okay, so that's from the NFT, we find the collection, no problem. Given the collection, can we find all NFTs? That gets a bit trickier because essentially we have the same problem again. The collection doesn't know which NFTs belong to it. So we need to query that again. We could, of course, store all of the tokens inside the collection. This advantage of that is that that takes quite a bit of storage space and people are already complaining how much rent they need to pay for candy machine, but that at least they get back. If we were to store it in the collection, it would be there permanently. And for larger collections, that's also just not a good solution. So what do I propose? Well, I'm glad you ask. See, the candy machine, let's open that here. The candy machine, when we do a mint, let me see, where is that? Mint one token. There. I mean, this is new. Setup state. I don't know what that is. Ah, okay. I think that is if we have to split it in two transactions because it's too big, then the previous transaction we kind of put in here. Okay. Yeah, so that's just if we have to split it in two transactions, which... We now need to do it because Candy Machine is just too powerful to handle it all in one anyway. So point is, let's ignore that for now. What we're doing here is we choose a new key pair for our token mint. So this is random. We just generate any key pair and make that our token mint. So we create that account and set the owner to the token program, such that the token program can then initialize this token and then we can create the associated token accounts and mint one 
So essentially, the only place where we need to have the mint as a signature, there we push the mint as a signer, because we need that here. We need to sign that we can create this account and set the token program as the owner. From there on out, we're good. Point being, this doesn't need to be a random key pair. This doesn't need to be a random address. I'm arguing that we can get rid of this randomness and make the address actually something useful, something that you can query for, something that you can predict, something that you can derive. So instead of just using a generated key pair here, why not derive an address from, I don't know, maybe the collection and maybe the ID of the NFT in the candy machine or something like that? See, and you can tell me where I'm wrong on this because I might be. I might not get some things because I do not get some things. But why not? Because we do have the collection, collection PDA. I mean, we can also use the candy machine address itself. We can also use that creator. I mean, that's fine with me as long as it's something predictable. You know, I would recommend it to be the collection mint, which is probably this thing. I would derive the address with this mint and the ID of the NFT in the sequence. So make it... I don't know, four bytes or whatever, because one byte is not enough. 255 NFTs is not enough for a collection. So I don't know, make it four bytes, make it a, a U32 or something. Those four bytes you add to the 32 bytes of the mint address and all of that you provide as a seed for finding another PDA. And that, of course, we need to do with a program for instance, the candy machine. Why not? We're already in the candy machine. Why not let the candy machine do it? So the candy machine can derive with its program ID and those seeds that address. And since that is a PDA, we also have to give it a bump, but find program address will do that for us, I guess. And then we use this address here as the mint, which essentially means we, c we don't generate the new one here, but here we would also just say find program address. And for the seeds, we provide, as I said, the collection mint and the ID of the NFT. No, but then we need to know that in front end already. Then we already need to know which ID we're going to mint. Okay, I see where the problem comes in. Uh, we would get around that somehow. Don't know how, but there will be a solution for that. We provide the program ID, of course, the candy machine, and then we get the address that we can then use. Of course, then we cannot sign with this anymore, at least not here in front end. So we cannot push this as a signer, which means this has to be executed by the candy machine and the candy machine can sign for it by providing their seeds Again, the collection mint plus the ID. And if we do that, then we have a predictable mint address. And by having predictable mint addresses, we can quickly query for them because then we just take the collection mint and go through the indices sequentially and search for those addresses because then we have the address and then we can quickly check it on mainnet is that address there? Solana, give me that account, please. And uh, we can check if it exists. And if it does, then it's probably our NFT there. So yeah, with that, I think this whole querying for NFTs of a collection could be made much smoother. I mean, of course it has downsides, like we cannot change previous collections and we need to already know the index before we start to mint. The only reason the user needs to know the index is because in the transaction, we need to tell which account needs to be writable, which account, so which account we want to create. So we need to know the account. And if the candy machine knows it, 
that's too late. We already need to know it in front end. So we already need to know which index we want to mint. But see, I was never a fan of that randomness here. In fact, sometimes when I am on a mint page, I click mint and then I see which address is generated for my NFT and I'm like, I don't like this address and then I cancel and then I mint again with a different <laughs> address just because I can. Yeah. And we really don't need that. And you're free to put in whatever here. Like for one collection where they wanted it pre-minted and then airdropped, I basically generated a bunch of addresses with the Solana key gen. I grinded them and then I minted it to those addresses. And that resulted in the nicest hash list I've ever seen because they all start with the same three letters, which was kind of cool. But also kind of pointless because you can't use that to query them. But if they were like predictable, if we had those seeds and they were predictable in a way, that would be really cool. Now, I, I just had that idea today and there might be more problems with it. Like I'm already facing, like we need to know that index, but I'm, I'm sure we can get around that somehow. Yeah, I hope that you understand what I'm talking about and what I'm proposing Let's chat. Let's chat about it. I'm here to learn. I want to know, is that feasible or is that utter BS? Call me out on it in the comments. And Mr. J. Prince, thank you for your answer. And I would really like to chat with you about that. I'd be interested on what your thoughts are. So, yeah, hit me up. I'll be waiting for your response. And uh, everybody else, you can leave me your response here on YouTube, in the Discord or on Twitter. And I'm looking forward to learning more about the Metaplex NFT standard with you. Yeah, I'm here to provide value for this space, right? I want to improve stuff. And I'm just thinking this could be a really nice way to improve stuff. Because those addresses really don't need to be random. And the users don't care what address the NFT lies on. It's random anyway. How about we derive them somehow? Because essentially the hash list is just that. It's just a list of tokens. So if that was predictable, then we wouldn't have to mess around with hash lists so much. I really want to see that. I really want to see that those token addresses are somehow connected to some account. Somehow. Let's just discuss this. Could be cool or not feasible at all, but I want to know why. So looking forward to those discussions and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. By the way, if you're interested in more basic videos, check those out. Yeah. Good night now.